Hello and welcome uh, in basic uh, level of uh, module 10 uh, implementation of broadband networks. Uh, here, uh, uh, the lecture, uh, this lecture consists of uh, three uh, parts. Uh, each part um, is uh, trying to describe uh, the different facts which are, of course, related to uh, each other and of course uh, are strictly related with the uh, implementation of, uh, of broadband network as a procedure and the, and the, and the whole process um, but uh, each part uh, is focusing on something different it, uh, um, uh, it, it needs to give you the view for a more formal uh, a part of, of, of things which are related with the implementation of such ICT projects and um, the, the, uh, of course there is a part for engineer uh, um, engineer part where you will uh, find out uh, what are the common structures and topologies implemented in each layer of uh, broadband network so that the traffic uh, which flows through the network uh, can be managed and um, uh, uh, and of course the network is uh, more scalable uh, uh, and air resistant okay before uh, before of course you uh, go uh, with the uh, with the lecture I would like to, to encourage you to take a short quiz uh, which called which is called basic quiz one prerequisites uh, which uh, can be found in the model uh, so that you can uh, get a feeling of where you are with your knowledge already uh, and of course uh, you can test your knowledge uh, um, to see uh, uh, if, if this is uh, appropriate uh, module for you. Okay, the first thing which I'm gonna discuss uh, in this lecture uh, are the examples of ICT projects around the world in Europe. Um, so, first example uh, of uh, the country. Uh, which I would say is a pre one of the precursors of, uh, of, imp of implementation of ICT uh, infrastructure uh, is Sweden. Well, uh, Sweden in the middle of the 19th last century um, decided to um, invest around 4 billion United States dollar f uh, into the passive infrastructure, which was uh, uh, assumed to be a carrier of carriers, uh, which, uh, which, is, uh, which means that is uh, open uh, and accessible for every telecom operator. Uh, so they can uh, base uh, their services on the uh, 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 on a general carrier um, <clears throat> uh, of course this optical infrastructure has uh, been built uh, as a first stage in the metro settlement um, it was providing access for users living in uh, flat blocks uh, currently the, uh, the the optical infrastructure um, allows to offer residential users 100 megabits per second access line bandwidth uh, which is the uh, fiber to the home technology here um, the second example of uh, a world leader in ICT projects is Japan uh, and what did Japan in the middle of 19th um, in the last century uh, Japan has issued the directive um, that uh, up to 2005 Japan should be the uh, most advanced ICD country uh, in broadband IP access. So uh, they assume to have a level of broadband line, lines penetration um, around 90% of uh, whole households. Uh, the main aim of this directive uh, was to connect not less than 44 million of households um, with the uh, broadband access lines. Uh, around 10 million households should be connected uh, uh, with the usage of uh, fiber to the home lines with 100 megabit per second bandwidth. Currently, it's, uh, it is now uh, 1 gigabit per second. While around 30 million should be connected um, via 10 megabit links in FTTH, CATV, or XDSL uh, technology. Um, the, the Japan government uh, didn't invest um, directly 
uh, into the passive infrastructure, um, but has a given. Uh, it, it was a. It was a, It was given uh, for Japan operators with so-called zero interest. So it was also a carrier of carrier, but they, they didn't charge the. Um, they didn't charge the uh, telecom providers for for using this. Uh, the third example. Um, is uh, South Korea and the uh, so-called KII action plan, uh, which has been uh, uh, issued in 1995. The plan assumed the um, uh, following things. Uh, creation of a new backbone broadband optical infrastructure, um, which was invested directly from the government funds, uh, and it costs over a million and a half, uh, one million, 1.5 billion United States dollars. Sorry, uh, creation of uh, optical infrastructure uh, for uh, access network um, for next 1 billion United States dollar of government support, uh, which uh, included the very low interest uh, credits for local operators invested in access infrastructure. So that means that it it uh, it was easier for uh, for local service providers to uh, to implement the access for for residential users for flat users in the cities because they had really low rates in the in this in, 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 they had they had low low rates in the, and they didn't they wasn't charged the, um, for using access to backbone network. <laughs> Investment of uh, uh, of about 700 million United States dollars in research and development for innovative information society solutions. Uh, also, uh, Europe um, has its uh, own uh, special plan for ICT project, and uh, the example of such plan is uh, is uh, Europe 2002 Action Plan Five. Uh, which recommends usage of public funds for uh, financing broadband infrastructure um, investment process. Um, this, of course, um, that, that does not it doesn't change the local competitive telecom market. Uh, so this investment process is technologic technologically neutral. Neutral, so, so that means that it doesn't kill the uh, local uh, uh, local businesses for for providing access. Um, so they it, it can be competitive. They can be competitive with each other, uh, so that the uh, uh, end customers have the best uh, offers to get. Uh, EU Commission decided that around seven point three percent of ERDF funds, um, which are the about 10 billion euros, can be um, uh, can be destined for ICT projects. Um, these projects should stimulate the development of broadband IP services. Um, the ERDF funds can be used both for realization of passive infrastructure, uh, so uh, as a dark fibers or radio masts, and of course for purchasing the active telecom equipment. Uh, this infrastructure, um, uh, passive and, and, and of course active, um, should be possible to use by all telecom operators uh, um, in, in the area or, or ISPs providers, right? Uh, here we can see some uh, examples of ICT regional projects uh, which uh, were leaded in Europe. Uh, so it, the first example is a Red Ostrogan project in Spain. Uh, the second one is Liz Tele project in Norway. Um, Inet project uh, which is the optical um, uh, MAN network in Ireland. Fiber speed project in Wales, Great Britain. Uh, digital region project in South Yorkshire, also Great Britain, uh, CityNet project from Amsterdam, and um, Kuyavian Pomeranian Broadband Communication Network from Poland. Mm, here we have some details about this uh, uh, 
that, that about the chosen project. Uh, here we have uh, the Spain the Spanish project. The the project started in two thousand six, uh, and it was led in three Asturias towns. Um, it was assuming to stimulate the economy uh, of this region, um, which was the most undeveloped region uh, of Spain. Uh, the main project, uh, the main goal of this project was to build a network joining uh, 32,000 households uh, on the end of 2008. On the end of 2007, the network um, uh, has been connected to 28,000 households. Um, and on the, uh, on the end of 2008, uh, it is assumed to be connected about 7,000 users as, as the first phase linked only 6, 600 users. And the government of Asturias has defined the minimal bandwidth for the user at the level of 10 megabits per second. Uh, on the end of March 2008, the total project budget was estimated on 21 million uh, euros. Uh, local Asturias government has become both an owner of the infrastructure uh, as well the, as the operator managing this infrastructure. Uh, currently, the network operators um, operates as a carrier of carriers, providing an access for all operators and uh, local internet service providers. Uh, the income generated from the leasing of dark fibers, uh, the income is generated from the leasing of, of, of the dark fibers by the, uh, by the owner. Um, and uh, we see how the uh, source of financing uh, was built. Uh, so uh, we have 60% uh, of uh, European funds, ERDF funds here, and 40% came from uh, local government budget. Um, so this is exactly the diagram for it, and the uh, the the how the shares were div uh, were divided among the, uh, the the public sector and the private sector. Um, so you see that the, the Asturias government outsourced the technology uh, to the Alcatel, uh, which was the here and the main main uh, contractor and the technology supplier. Um, and of course, uh, <coughs> the subject uh, for infrastructure management uh, was built and is all as, as, as it was said it is uh, managed by the public sub sector uh, which is the, the public infrastructure with the, uh, the I'm sorry the, uh, the passive infrastructure and active infra infrastructure is managed by the local government mm. uh, and it is being uh, it is being uh, outsourced well at least at least to service providers so this is where the uh, the money comes from. Okay, so the service providers are paying to the local government uh, for 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 using the carrier of carriers for using the network. Uh, and another example is the CityNet project from Amsterdam. Uh, so on November two thousand five, the Amsterdam authorities um, announced this the the FTTH metro project. Um, the, the main goal of it was to, uh, to, to build a network with an access line bandwidth of the, the highest European level. Uh, in the first phase, uh, uh, it was assumed that uh, uh, they will connect 10% of households in Amsterdam, which was the number of 40,000 uh, households. The entire project connection uh, was, uh, was assumed to be um, it was assumed to connect 420,000 households and it was finished in 2010. Uh, the estimated total uh, project budget um, was around uh, 300 million euros. The budget of the first phase, um, which was this 40,000 households, was um, estimated on around 40 million of euros. Um, and the total project, project budget um, was estimated from the budget um, uh, of the f of the first phase. Uh, the main service offered uh, to service providers by the network is uh, just a wholesale of broadband access. 
the retail services um, are offered uh, by the different service providers. Uh, so we have uh, on the market QFast, Inter N, uh, N L Net, Alice, which is the part of Telecom Italia. Uh, access line is of course symmetrical and it's bandwidth of 50 megabits per second. Uh, currently the most popular service is called the triple play tariff uh, which costs 40 to 60 euros per month. Um, uh, it is estimated that the average uh, revenue um, per user will be not less than 25 euros per month. Uh, in the network, uh, the uh, technology which is installed there are the IP and Palace routers. So for each service, the, the private VLAN can be uh, created. Um, the project was realized by the commercial company called GNA um, with its capital of 6 million euros. Uh, and uh, they, they, uh, they, their shares was on the level of one third shares of, of whole the project. Um, uh, and um, the network is uh, managed by BBNet company, which is the part of Telecom Italia, and they are selling the access for service providers, so they are managing the carrier of carriers network. Uh, sorry, uh, as the main part of the owners um, uh, are commercial companies, the project could not be financed by the European funds. Um, okay, and this is the diagram for uh, for this uh, public and the private uh, sector um, uh, financial shares. So we see that the one third of shares comes from Amsterdam, which is the public money. Um, and here we have uh, uh, the, uh, the private the, the the private sector, right? The the, the commercial sector. Uh, so it was an ENG, which was the one third, and the five ha housing corporations uh, joined together um, to manage the project. Uh, so uh, what they did was just, uh, uh, of course, uh, outsource the uh, the building of the infrastructure, the the building of the active equipment. So Draca delivered the cables, and um, uh, the BAM made uh, the realization of the project. Uh, so all the digging, all the um, uh, um, fibers blowing, etc., etc. Uh, and um, you can see here that the, the BB net here is the uh, is this the, the this the body of, of right now which uh, uh, which is managing the network. So it's as like an additional layer as the Amsterdam and uh, not the Amsterdam but the uh, the, the Spain the Spain project. Um, uh, assumed that uh, the infrastructure is the uh, property of the, the local government. Here, there's another layer, uh, so that the uh, the public government, the, the the public sector doesn't care about it. It is outsourced to be uh, managed by the uh, um, uh, professional company, which is here the BBNet right now, and they are the managing and selling uh, the, the access to the service providers. Uh, okay, so uh, this would be uh, uh, end of uh, part uh, one here. Uh, take the quiz in the Moodle uh, so that uh, you can uh, check and verify what uh, did you remember uh, from the first uh, from the first part. Um, okay, thank you so much.